Ruben got his first cold at three weeks and it kind of didn't really go away. I suppose you don't pick up hearing loss in a young child until maybe six or eight months old when they are starting to, to interact. And she used to wake up screaming in the middle of the night and then suddenly stop. Um, and we just thought she was just, just an unsettled child. Most of my practice involves seeing young children and coughs and colds in this age group are particularly common. What can often happen in a child who has a cold is that the virus or the bacteria that's causing the problem will track up and give them an ear infection known as otitis media. Happy Charlie with his skateboard stops to see the way ahead. Bus is stopping very slowly for the traffic light is red. Children need the chance to develop as best they can and to reach their full potential. They need good hearing to understand what's going on around them and to be able to learn and communicate. That's why their hearing is so important. Or low. If children can't hear properly, it's like wearing earmuffs and feeling separated from what's going on. All young children are at risk of getting a condition called otitis media, which is also known as middle ear infection or glue ear. What's in your ear? Can I have a little peek? The kind of things that children will come in with usually are pain, that's the main one. And in children who can't tell you they're in pain, they'll be irritable and restless. They might have disturbed sleep. The part of the ear that you can see when you're looking is the outer ear, and then you go into the canal, and then you reach the eardrum. Behind the eardrum is the middle ear. And all that a middle ear infection in is, is some pus and infection in that space where there's supposed to be air. Big blow. Oh, one more, like a horse. Oh, great. Monet, her personality was different. She was constantly agitated. She was touching her ear all the time. Her personality was just, she didn't sleep very well. He'd had a temperature and um, he was crying a lot. And in fact, I couldn't stop him crying. She was not unsettled. There was no temperature. She just had a ruptured eardrum. So we, we, we went straight off to our GP and um, she was treated from there. So we took her to the doctor because um, we had no idea what was wrong and that's when they figured out that she had ear infections. In a child under six months, we generally treat with antibiotics, but in a child over six months, we like to give them a trial of time up to about 48 hours. That's because it can often settle quite quickly all on its own and then you don't need to have treatment. But if it persists after 48 hours, we often give antibiotics. A small group go on to get what we call glue ear, which is where you get fluid just staying in the area of the middle ear where there should be air space. That usually clears over time again, but it can take some months and we, you can run into problems. With glue ear, the infection has become chronic and when it's left untreated, what happens is that the, uh, it, it's difficult for sound to pass and so the child starts to develop real hearing difficulties. One of the first ones we often see is that the drum actually ruptures and they end up with a hole in their eardrum and pus pouring out. Again, that can settle on its own, but occasionally it doesn't heal up well. Um, you can end up with the little bones in the middle ear affected and that can give you more permanent hearing loss. So there are some more long-term things we need to look out for. Uh, a gluey can occur without any other symptoms. It can be simply the child may not be experiencing pain, they may show no signs of any kind of infection. They're simply experiencing um, a condition that they can't describe, which is that their ear is filled with a thick fluid and that no sound can go through. Having had a child who has had otitis media, it does give me the personal experience to be able to see the signs and symptoms of possible otitis media and share that information with other people. When I'm visiting carers and working with children of various age groups, it's a matter of looking at different patterns of behaviour which may suggest that there are hearing problems for the individual children. Depending on the age group, um, things like lack of concentration, poor balance, poor coordination in perhaps the older children. Well, mainly when the children first start, I just watch them for a little while just to see, you know, what their own personality is, if they're alone or what. But then you start to notice 
um, if they're not playing with the other children, not communicating at all with the other children. Like one little boy gets very angry if you don't understand what he's trying to tell you. Um, and, you know, the speech is, is not good. And um, it's just things like that, you know, that you would look out for, I think. If you're having to request them to do things over and over again, if they want the telly or the video up louder, or they appear to not be hearing you unless they're looking at your face directly, then we suggest that you get them reviewed. Oops. What about this one? This one's a good one too, isn't it? Lottie responded well to any question or any direction that you gave to her. So it didn't appear as though she was suffering from hearing loss, but she wouldn't let anyone touch her ears. She was a little bit irrita irritable and sudden noises scared her. Yeah, she was never 100%. Chicken? After her, her course of antibiotics, we took her back and her eardrum was still not back to normal. Um, and she was just not happy. The things I'd, I'd look out for on Reuben was um, a temperature, but particularly if he was having a cold and he was having lots of um, nasal drips because it was dripping back into his ear, as well as coming out his nose, it was going into his ear canal and that's what um, would set it off. In a baby it can be quite difficult to pick up. Um, generally the things that the mothers will present with is my child's not sleeping properly, they seem irritable, occasionally they'll be rubbing at their ears. Um, they can also have a cold at the time, that can give you a clue and they can get fevers as well. All babies born in New South Wales at the moment are screened before they leave hospital with a hearing test. And that's really only screening for causes of hearing loss that have been a problem in the development of the baby. It doesn't rule out that they're going to have problems down the track. What are you writing? What is it? A diary. A diary. And what are you writing in that diary? Don't know? You can imagine what it would be like if you couldn't hear properly and you see that everybody else understands what's going on around you and they seem to know where they're going and why they're doing something and uh, uh, the child who can't hear doesn't necessarily feel very good about themselves because they don't understand what's going on. Okay, so let me move this aside. Can you help me, Isaac? It can mean that they have confused messages, they might miss out on what's being asked of them and then they might behave in a way that's misconstrued and seen to be naughty. Um, but, you know, if there is a problem uh, with the hearing, I think it's important that it's picked up, especially before they go to school. It can have a huge impact on a child's ability to learn, to concentrate, to remember things, to understand things. And the impact upon their education then is that they will not be able to achieve things that they would have been had their hearing been at a normal level. Otitis media can give you some hearing losses and that can be hard to pick up in little kids. So we use a very rough guide about the kind of language development we should be seeing. Just as a, a very rough guide, what I tell parents is at 12 months you should expect around three words and that might be very simple mama da da bosh something like that by 18 months we're normally looking for 10 words and that might not be perfectly formed words but they're words that the parent recognizes by two you want them to be starting to put one or two words together so that's very rough and that's because children develop at different rates but if you're not seeing those things happening in your child it's worth getting checked oh, bigger than that like a horsey some strategies you can use to minimise infection are blowing children's noses, wiping your hands afterwards, washing children's hands and washing toys. I try to encourage the children from when they start, you know, to do all these things, to wash their hands and blowing their noses as well. They're told, you know, where the tissue boxes are and if they need help, I help them. Good girl, look at that. Carers spend a lot of time with children and they see the children and their development. If they see any signs of otitis media or anything that makes them suspect it might be there, they should encourage the families to contact their local doctor. Um, I try to get down to their level and even turn their face at times, you know, if they're not looking or listening to you, so that they can see you and see what you're saying to them. Speak clearly and slowly and don't give too many instructions at once. What about the yellow? 
Where's the yellow? If you're trying to explain things and you've got a big group of children, then you want the child with hearing loss to be up the front where they can hear what's going on. And I guess the other thing that is probably overlooked is if you have a really unwell child presenting to daycare, I would encourage the parents to take the child home so that they're not putting the other children at risk. From an early stage, it's good to be able to breastfeed if that's something you can manage and we're seeing evidence that if you can breastfeed for at least six months, that can help. The other big one is not smoking and that's something we really do encourage. And the third one is trying not to prop your baby up with a bottle at night so that the milk is just draining in. If you want to be feeding the baby, sit them up in your arms and feed them and then lay them down. Don't prop them up to feed. Some children may need to visit an ENT specialist and get a small tube called a grommet inserted into their ear through the drum to help the ear drain and stay dry. The grommets were completely successful. They cleared all the liquid um, and he had his first dry ears within a week. I also saw a homeopath that specialised in paediatrics um, and particularly ears. There's recently been introduced a vaccine known commonly as Prevenar, which covers one of the causes of otitis media, and the government has now funded that for all children born from January the 1st, 2003. There was an immediate change in him after the grommet operation. I noticed him turning to small sounds, birds tweeting, which I hadn't noticed before. His, he picked up like words within the first fortnight. Now that's yellow. She has had a total personality change. She's a lot more content, she sleeps better, she's just happier. She responds with amazement to the world around her, so she responds to noises that she obviously didn't hear before. Don't ignore the signs, especially if they're touching their ears constantly, getting sick, or they're irritable and just not happy. Take him to the doctor. Ask to be referred to a you nose know, and throat specialist. Make sure that you get a hearing test. Otitis media can happen to anyone. It can happen to any child. In fact, 80% of young children under the age of three have had an experience of middle ear infection, and it's the recurrent middle ear infections that lead to otitis media. If you're delayed in speech, then you're going to be missing out on all your learning and you're also going to be missing out on socialisation. And that can have a really major impact on how a child does at school and also in their general life. Bus. That's the bus stop, yes. Hearing's so critical to learning. You don't want them held back in any way.